name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining the the second watch. Uh, today is Friday, the eleventh of October. Uh, we're gonna share how to truly worship God. The the true worship. We're gonna share our thoughts on how to truly worship the law. How to truly worship the law. So <clears throat> before we start, we're going to read um, in the in the book of John four. John four, uh, from verse twenty three, uh, uh, where uh, Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman, where he say, "But the hour is coming." And now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. So that is uh, John 4, verse 23. But the, the hour is coming. And now is, is when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and, and truth. For Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in, in truth. So in that passage, we see that... Uh, to worship God is the true worship. The true worship of God has to be in spirit and is true. And the Almighty God is seeking those who, uh, or the worshiper who will worship Him in spirit and is true. And we can relate this passage uh, to another passage in the, in the Old Testament. But before we go there in Leviticus and see how uh, that Old Testament to people in, in the old day of the Old Testament, they, they were worship, worshiping God, we will understand that uh, God is spirit. And because he is spirit, he really want our worship to be in spirit and is in truth. So when we worship him in in the in the spirit, because we are made in three parts, the Bible tells us that we are made in body, soul, and spirit. He referred the worship that we is cross our body and then our spirits relate to connect directly to his spirit. So that is the type of worship that the Lord is looking for. So when the worship comes directly from our spirit, it connects, there's a communion between uh, the spirit of God and, and our spirit. That is the kind of worship the Lord wants us to ascend and to connect because the body and the soul can be filthy and might not connect with the spirit. But the Lord wants us to ascend in the spirit so that during our worship, we will connect with with his spirit. And that is where the, it can be a revelation. That is when we can ascend and uncover, uncover the mystery of God. But how can we ascend in the spirit? When is the worship, when we, do, do we worship him until we connect spirit to spirit? Is when we leave aside anything that can be bothering us, our thought, 
what is going on around us, what is what what kind of situation is going on, is the bill has to, it has to be paid, is the child is behaving well, and all this we leave it aside and we only focus to God and let our spirit uh, ascend to him. And how can we worship? We can worship by praising him, by uh, we, we, we must worship him by, by uh, using the song to, to sing through it. And when we are doing so, we have to be really, really uh, focus on him and let the Holy Spirit carry us and connect us to the spirit of the living God. And that is what the kind of worship that the Lord uh, want us to produce. And in, or in order to, to, uh, to get to that level, we have to live, we have to seek the Holy Spirit constantly. Let our let let us be filled with the Holy Spirit, and a certain at at that point during our worship, when the Holy Spirit is there, He will connect us and let us uh, get to a dimension that the our spirit is uh, truly connected to this to the Spirit of God, and. Uh, when we get to that level, it's at that point that we should uh, be be is the is the type of worship that the Lord is seeking for His children. Is the type of worship that the Lord is seeking from His children to worshiping in spirit. Like I say, we, we at that point our spirit has to be uh, more active. And we have to release anything that is coming from our soul, our body, uh, any kind of situation that can be there. We, we need to drop it and then ascend in the spirit through the Holy Spirit. We connect uh, with the spirit of God. That when that, that is the kind of worship that his father is seeking within the spirit. And it could be through a singing a song of worship. It could be through uh, speaking in tongue where we release our mind and our spirit to his spirit, spirit to spirit, speaking to him, ministering him, and saying good thing to him throughout through the spirit. And connect with the spirit. This is the kind of worship that produces mystery. It's the kind of worship that we connect with God and receive from Him, receive direction, receive uh, heaven mysteries, heavenly from them, receive the mind of God for our life, receive the what God wants us to achieve. That kind of worship that produces spiritual things. So one part of this verse is the Lord wants us to worship him in spirit. And the other part is he wants us to worship him in, in truth. So what is worshiping God in truth? So we know uh, truth, uh, truth means sincerity. So it requires sincerity, and and uh, we should we can uh, see this type of worship in in the book of uh, Leviticus. We're going to go to the New uh, Old Testament to the book of of Leviticus and see uh, how we can worship him in the. In spirit, so it should be Leviticus uh, chapter two, I believe, from from the beginning of the of the chapter. Uh, let me find it in my Bible here. Okay, 
uh, Leviticus 2. How to worship the law in, in truth. So, uh, in Old Testament, they, they worship the law by giving sacrifice, by offering sacrifice. And the law uh, require a certain a certain way to offer that sacrifice, which is their own way of worshiping. So let's see it in uh, Leviticus from chapter two. The, I'm starting the, from verse one. When anyone offer a grain offering to to the Lord, his offering shall be of fine flour and he shall pour oil on it and put frankincense on it. He shall bring it to Aaron's son, the priest, one of whom shall take from it his handful of fine flour and oil with all the frankincense, and the priest shall burn it as a memorial on the altar, an offering made by fire, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering shall be Aaron and his son. It is most holy of the offering to the Lord made by fire. And if you bring us an offering, a grain offering baked in the oven, it shall be on living cake of fine flour mixed with oil or in living wafer anointed with oil. But if your offering is a grain offering baked in a pan, it shall be of fine flour on living mixed with oil. You shall break it in pieces and pour oil on it. It is a grain offering. If your offering is a grain offering baked in a cover pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. You shall bring the grain offering that is made of this thing to the Lord. And when it is presented to the priest, it shall bring it to the altar. Then the priest shall take from the grain offering a memorial portion and burn it on the altar. It is an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. Let retain this a sweet aroma to the law, and that is left of the grain offering shall be, and uh, be Aaron and his son. It is most holy of the offering to the Lord made by fire. Uh, let's see verse eleven here. Say no grain offering which is which you bring to the Lord shall be made with leaven. For you shall burn burn no leaven or nor any honey in the offering to the Lord made by fire. So we shall we should stop here and understand and try to understand what uh, is a sweet aroma offering that the Lord is requiring. So we are talking at, uh, about worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. And for the first part, we, we already uh, explained that uh, as uh, concerning worshiping him in spirit, uh, the Lord Jesus already addressed it in John 4, verse 20, 23, where he was speaking to the Samaritan woman at the well telling that the hour has come where the true worshiper will worship God in spirit and in truth. And we we already analyzed how to worship God in, in, in spirit, because as a human being, we are made up in three parts, body, soul, and spirit. But through our worship, the kind of the very active worship that the law uh, required to us is when we worship him in spirit. And that go directly to God because He want the Spirit to ascend to His Spirit, our Spirit to communicate with His Spirit. 
And for us to be able to do that, we need to lay aside our body or our soul, anything that is coming from our body, any situation that is can be uh, passing through our mind as our, our spirit, our mind, we should leave it to the aside so that we should ascend in spirit and that kind of worship, that's the one that the Father requires because spirit, the Holy Spirit will connect us with the Spirit of God so we can receive or connect directly with the Spirit of God to receive direction. And this is the kind of worship that Father, Father is required from us. And we are now saying that how to worship him in truth then. We want to uh, take a passage in the in Leviticus 2 and uh, from verse 1 to 11 to explain how we can uh, worship worship God in truth because um truth requires sincerity and the Lord is telling uh, the children of Israel in the Old Testament how he want uh, his offering to be of to be given to him and he demand a certain aromatic fragrance frankincense on that offerings and on on that on his uh, offering or on his sacrifice so <clears throat> frankincense is in the old testament is a type of of uh, fragrance is a type of fragrance that the Lord is require, requiring to his people. So he want their worship to smell like fra frankincense. That's, that's what we read in, the, in this pas passage. And in order for their sacrifice to smell like, uh, like a frankincense, he said, he, uh, it has to pass through fire. So we do not offer any worship to uh, to human being, but when we offer it to God, he want it to be burned and he want it to pass through fire and to release a fragrance that uh, is smell, that, that to release an aromatic fragrance that uh, smell like frank frankincense so he want our of uh, our the sacrifice or the fragrance to rise up in his nostril so no burnt offerings is to be bring to the lord uh without without uh the smell of frankincense so the law require in the Old Testament that they, they should offer him a, 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 a offering, a worship that has to pass through fire. And when the offering is passed through fire, it releases a fragrance that is sweet to his nostril. But he do not accept uh, as we read on this passage, his the 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 type of offering that he he know is gonna bring frank, frankincense has to be they have to pour uh, the oil on it, like he said the rest that, that and the priest shall burn it is a memorial on the altar and offering made by fire. A sweet aroma to the law. Um, the offering shall be baked in the oven, in the oven. It shall be on leaven cake of fine flour mixed with oil. So I was coming to this mixed with oil. What is oil represent here? Oil represent with the Holy Spirit. So the, even in the Old Testament, it has to be mixed with the 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 sacrifice. Has to, the Holy Spirit has to be a presence 
when you offer your sacrifice. And the offering has to stand fire. The offering has to stand fire. And when it's baked and it's burned on the fire, it releases a sweet aroma. It has to release a sweet aroma to the Lord. That's the kind of offering that the Lord is required to his uh, to his people. The kind of worship that he, he requires, it has to be sweet. When we are worshiping him, when we are talking to him, what kind of thing are we telling him? Is it is it a, a sacrifice that can stand fire? Can we are we offering things that are sweet to his uh, ears? Is our worship taste good, or we are just uh, talking? I mean, complaining. Are we worshiping just? by asking God that, oh, Father, you did not do this, you did not do that, you did not do that in our mind, or are we telling him sweet things? Oh, God, you are the mighty God, you are the Father, you are our Father. Are we thanking him, worshiping him for who he is, the mighty one, the one who created the, the whole world, the one who gave us life? Is that this kind of things that is coming to us, to him, with a sweet aroma that he can hear from our worship, or it's only maybe uh, a kind of nobody can you can be in the uh, middle of the I mean in in the crowd nobody can sense what you are saying, but the Lord know our mind is that in our mind is when we are worshiping is that only maybe complain, maybe jealousy, looking how God is blessing this person and not blessing me, but we just pretend that we are worshiping him, but in the, in, in what is coming in our spirit, what kind of the fragrance that is smoking out of us is not something that he, he can be smelling. He can have a sweet fragrance to the law. So it's we have to determine what kind of worship is coming through us, through our spirit, when nobody is hearing, when in our inner mind, when the spirit is connected, when we are releasing it to him, is that a sweet word that is coming from us? Because that is what the Lord is requiring to his people. He, the Holy Spirit has, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to, to visit us, to overshadow our worship, and we should release a uh, sweet aroma to him. We should release sweet fragrance to him. Fragrance is what is smelling good. That's what if what uh, the Lord uh, want us to bring to him during our worship. And in verse in verse eleven. We see, we we see that no grain offering which you bring to the Lord shall be made with leaven, for you shall burn no leaven nor any honey in any offering to the Lord made by fire. So, the Lord, although we know that the honey is sweet, the offering that the Lord wants us to give him has to be burned by fire. But we cannot burn honey. In that, in the Old Testament, it doesn't want the honey to be on the offering. He wants the oil, they want the fragrance, the frankincense to be on the offering because it will bring a sweet aroma. So, those are the that that's the type of offering the law want the law want his children to release to him something sweet something with aroma but things a uh, 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 worship that cop the a sacrifice that cover with uh, with the honey when it passed through fire it will not bring a sweet aroma so the the law don't want that type of sacrifice. Don't offer to me worship 
uh, that you, 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 it shall not be tested first, the worship that shall not be tested. And we know that testing here is when it passed through fire. And when is when you put honey on the sacrifice or, and put it on the fire, honey will just be, become a black sticking mess because honey cannot give a, a, a sweet aroma versus frankincense that is oil that is poured on the sacrifice. So we have to ask ourselves, are we putting the frankincense on our worship or are we putting honey during our worship or during our prayer? Because the Lord require the Lord one, the Lord is telling us that he prefers to have a sweet aroma that come from the frankincense. He did not want, and when the the sweet aroma, when when you pour uh, that oil, that frankincense of the offering, although it will pass through fire, it will bring sweet aroma. It will not bring, it will not bring bad odor versus honey, that when it pass through fire, it will just not bring something that is. Uh, smelling good to the law. So, so the Lord don't want that type of worship, a worship that is not sincere. We are talking about true worship. What kind of true worship the Lord wants? Is it sincere to him? Is it going to bring sweet aroma? Or is it going to be a worship that you just put honey and when it pass through fire, it will it might not... Um, it will not, not my not. It will not give a a sweet aroma to the law. So, it, we should encourage ourselves to pour oil to bring the presence of God whenever we are worshiping to be concentrated in Him only. So the Holy Spirit will connect to us, so we can. The, the 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 aroma that will come through our worship with please God will bring a sweet aroma. Not we should not bring honey on our worship because when the honey pass through fire, it will not it will not bring sweet aroma. It will it will bring bad odor. Honey will be sticky, but worship where we are not uh, focus on him will not bring anything good. And we should and also in uh, the book of first Corinthians six, first Corinthians six from verse sixteen to seventeen. We we'll see what the Lord is saying here from verse 16 to 17. Do you, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verse, verse 16, I start with 15 here, 1 Corinthians 6, 15. Do you not know that your body, mem you are, that your body are member of Christ? Shall I then take the member of Christ and make them member of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who join, who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But who is who he who he is joined to the Lord is spirit is one spirit with him. So, in this passage in First Corinthians six, from verse fifteen, and it go to seventeen, we see two kind of uh, of join here. Join means here, the Lord is 
telling us about two different kind of union that can happen. It could be physical, which is the flesh with flesh, or spiritual union, which is spirit to spirit. So when when we worship and our flesh is speaking more than our spirit, we are not giving God the true worship because here he said, when, when you join yourself with the body, we, do you know that your body are a member of Christ? Shall I take the member of Christ and make them member to hell? Certainly, certainly. Or do you not know that he who joined the harlot is on one body with her? So when when we worship, the body cannot, the body or the physical part cannot join, cannot connect, cannot communicate with the spirit of God. That's what I'm trying to bring out with this passage. So if, because we are spirit, body, and soul, if we let, we will let, if we let the physical part dominate during our worship, we, sh we will never reach our goal, mean ministering to God, because God is spirit. So we need to lay aside anything that is physical, anything that is fleshy, anything that is not spirit, like when if any emotional things in us, let it aside. Call upon the presence of the Holy Spirit for the spirit to connect with the spirit of God. That is how we can connect with him during the worship. So worship is the union that our spirit joins with the spirit of God. And when our spirit joins with the spirit of God, we are giving God the true worship that he wanted us to offer him. Because God is spirit, he cannot receive a worship that is mixed with things that are not from from God, from from spirit. So we need to make sure you ascend in the spirit so we can have a productive worship, a worship that smell a sweet aroma to him that he will accept. It will bring a sweet fragrance because only the spirit is can be connected with his spirit because he's his spirit. But if his if the flesh dominate our worship, which it cannot reach the nostril of the living God. So with that being saying, please bear with me. I will stop here. And that is uh the end of my sharing or my teaching. If there's anything to add, uh, the floor is open, or otherwise, we will just take a prayer point and ask God to help us. The floor is open. Marvel. Yes, <laughs> you're the only one who was it's good. Yeah, it's good to hear it refresh, especially the burning grain offering, the different offering. So, and uh, now we have to do the one just in the spirit. It's it's refreshing. It's refreshing. I uh, always know that it's only the Holy Spirit that gives us more revelation on how to improve or, or worship. Because sometimes you worship 
like uh, and you feel like crying but uh you don't know when emotion get into worship is it still in the spirit or not but all of these are still thing mm. that is the holy spirit who knows holy spirit. Yeah, yes. all of it mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. thank you so much no problem mm -hmm. so um mm, we will just I'll take a prayer point asking god to help us worshiping him in that the holy spirit will give us uh his revelation anytime we come to when he come to we, to worship god so we can worship him in spirit and in truth father lord we thank you we give you praise we give you honor we give you adoration father we thank you for this teaching today holy spirit we call upon you and any time, Holy Spirit, when we come, when we come to worship, Holy Spirit overshadow us, help us, let the flesh go down and let our spirit ascend so that the spirit will connect with the spirit of God to give to for the Lord to receive our worship, to connect with his spirit because God is spirit. Let us ascend all the time to the Spirit. Holy Spirit, help us. Let me ascend. Let my sister ascend. Let, our, let us ascend during the worship. Let us receive directly from you. Holy Spirit, help us. Help us. Help us. We cry for your help. We cry for your help. We cry for your presence during our worship. We cry for your presence, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Only you can ascend with us only you who know things of God Holy Spirit be present over shadows during our worship Father we thank you we give you praise we give you honor we give you adoration in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen Amen, Amen. 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 Uh, Let me stop the recording and Okay.